This is the Waveguide T-Junction Getting Started problem. This tutorial was intended to supplement the hard copy Getting Started guide that was provided with your software shipment. If you have not attempted the problem using the hard copy manual, you may wish to follow along at this time. We will begin at Chapter 2, Set Up the Design. Begin by opening HFSS version 9. In the Project Manager window, you should get a blank project. In our case, we don't have one, so we will use the File New command to open a new project. We then want to save the project to disk and give it a project name. We use the File Save As command to save the project and name it T in the file name box. Now that we have a project named T, we will insert a new design into the project. This step is required since a project in HFSS 9 may include many different models as part of a single project. As an example, a single project may include a waveguide feed, structure, rotary joints, and an antenna design. Once the HFSS model is inserted, we will rename it by clicking on the name in the project tree and using the Rename menu. We have renamed the design T model. There are generally two steps that you must finish before beginning the drawing process. You must use the HFSS Solution Type menu to specify the solution type for this design. In this case, it will be a driven modal solution. If you typically use a specific solution type, you may set it as the default by selecting Tools, Options, HFSS Options, and changing the default solution type with the pull-down menu. Second, you should generally set up the units under the 3D Modeler Units menu. For this waveguide model, we will set the units to inches from the default of millimeters. You may set the default units so that you can skip this step in the future by selecting the Tools, Options, General Options menu and changing the length selection under the Defaults tab. We're now ready to begin creating the model of the waveguide T. Begin creating the T-junction by selecting the Box function from the Draw menu. At the bottom of the screen, the status bar switches to a Data Entry panel. We could use the mouse to create the box, but we want exact coordinates, so we can enter them directly into the Data Entry panel. First, we enter the position of the base corner of the box using the Tab key to move from box to box in the panel. We enter 0 for x, minus 0 0.45 for y, and 0 for z. After pressing Enter, we input the lengths of the box sides, 2 in the x direction, 0 0.9 in the dy direction, and press Enter. We're now in Z entry mode and we enter 0 0.4 for the height of the box. When we press Enter, the box is created. The Properties window appears. The coordinates just used to create the box are entered in the Command portion of the window. You can change them here if necessary. Selecting the Attributes tab allows you to set up the name, material, and other properties of the object just created. We will assign the name of the object to T by typing it into the Name Value field and pressing Enter. The material should be set to Vacuum by default, which is what we want for this object. Selecting Transparency and setting the level to 0 0.4 will allow us to better visualize the complete device as other objects are drawn. Clicking OK assigns the properties to the box and the object creation process is now complete. We have two options at this point. We could continue to create the structure and create ports at the end as was required in previous versions, or we can add a wave port now and allow it to be copied with the object when we use the duplicate command. Duplicating the port will save time, so we will do it now. Enter face selection mode 
with the shortcut key or by right-clicking in the model window. Click the face located at x is equal to 2. Right-clicking in the modeler window or on the excitations entry in the project window will allow you to select Waveport. For the integration line, select New Line from the pull-down list and select the line in the modeler window. We'll select a line from the bottom of the waveguide port to the top. If you look carefully, you can notice the cursor change to a diamond when it snaps to the center of the line on the port. Select the defaults for the remainder of the waveguide wizard and click Finish. We can now duplicate the box and the wave port that we created along with it. First, we make sure the option is set in the HFSS Options menu. In this case, you can see Duplicate Boundaries with Geometry is set. Then we select the T object in the model tree and select Edit Duplicate Around Axis. Selecting the Z axis, entering 90 degrees in the angle box, and setting the total number to, of objects to 2, and clicking OK creates the second arm of the T junction, as well as the second port. The re procedure is repeated with an angle of minus 90 degrees to create the third arm of the junction. Notice how the software provides a preview of the object to be created. The basic junction is completed by uniting the sections using the 3D Modeler Boolean Unite command. First, however, we check the 3D Modeler option to verify that the Clone Objects option is cleared. Again, you can see Clone Tool Objects before uniting is indeed cleared. Using the model tree, we'll now select all three objects by holding the control key down and use the 3D Modeler Boolean Unite command. In order to be able to adjust the power split between the arms of the T-junction, we add a septum. A box is created using the mouse, without much care regarding the points since they will be specified exactly in the properties window when it appears. The data for the position is entered in the window with an equation for the value of the Y position. For position, we enter minus 0 0.45 inches, offset minus 0 0.05 inches, comma 0 inches for Z. Entering a variable into the position automatically brings up the add variable dialog, and we enter a value initially of 0 inches. We then set the X size to 0 0.45 inches, the Y size to 0 0.1 inches, and the Z size for the septum to 0 0.4 inches. Again we go to the, pro the attribute tab and we set the name of the object to septum. and click OK. In order to complete the model, we need to subtract the septum from the T. In the model history tree, again we select both objects. First the T as the base object, and then holding the control key down, the septum. Once both objects are selected, we use the 3D modeler, boolean, subtract, menu to subtract the parts.
the T being the blank part, and the septum being the tool part. Click OK, and the model is now complete. Now that the geometry, materials, boundaries, and excitations are assigned, we will set up the solution parameters for the simulation. Using the Analysis Add Solution Setup menu, we can specify the solution frequency, number of adaptive passes, and other parameters for the solution process. In this simulation, we will specify a solution frequency of 10 GHz and a maximum number of passes of 3. All other parameters will remain at the default so we'll click OK. Once the solution setup is created in the project tree, you can right-click on it and select Add Sweep to add a frequency sweep for the design. In the Edit Sweep dialog, we will specify an interpolating sweep with a linear step size of 0.05 GHz. The start and stop frequencies are set to 8 and 10 GHz respectively. All other settings will remain at the default values. After selecting OK, the frequency sweep appears in the project tree under Setup 1. The user should note that multiple analysis setups and frequency sweeps are possible for any design. Now that everything is properly set up, the user should validate the design using the HFSS validation check menu. Here you can see we've validated this design and all aspects of the design are properly set up. This step may be run at any, any time during the setup process to help guide the user through the design setup process. At this point the problem is ready to simulate. We'll click Analyze and wait for the solution to be completed. Jumping ahead, we can see the solution has been completed if we expand the messages in the mes message window. Now we want to change the position of the septum so we can compare the, that design to the first design. We change the septum position by changing the value of the variable offset that was designed during the initial design setup. To change the variable, right-click on the design name and select Design Properties. Under the Local Variables tab, you will see the variable offset listed with a value of 0. Change the value to 0 0.2 and click OK. The geometry is automatically updated and is ready to be reanalyzed without losing the results of the first simulation. You can see in the model window, the geometry has indeed changed. We now select Analyze in the project tree and allow the software to complete the simulation of the altered design. Once the solution process is complete, the results may be viewed in a variety of ways. First, we will create a plot of the S-parameters. In the project tree, we right-click on Results and select Create Report. For this report, we will simply use the defaults for the report type and the display type. Clicking OK brings up the Traces dialog box with the Y tab selected. We select the three S parameters of interest, S11, S12, and S13. We then switch to the X-axis tab and make sure the Use Primary Sweep is selected. Finally, under the Sweeps tab, we make sure the Sweep variable is set to Frequency. We also want to select the Sweep Design and Project Variables radio button under the Sweeps tab so that the curves for each project variable setting are plotted on the graph. Now that the selected traces are set up, click Add Trace and Done. Here you can see the values for all three S parameters at both values of the project variable offset. 
Next, we will create a field plot. First, we'll dismiss this plot and expand the modeler window. We'll set the variable offset back to zero. After resetting the variable, we s make sure we're in the Select Faces mode in, by clicking in the 3D model window. The, we then select the top face of the T-junction to create the model. Using the Plot Fields menu from either the HFSS menu or by right-clicking on the Field Overlays item in the Project Manager, we select Mag E as the quantity to plot. Verifying that Setup 1 Last Adaptive is selected, we click Done and the field plot is created and displayed. We'll dismiss the key so we can see a little better. A reference to the field plot is also created in the project tree under the Field Overlays item. We can animate the plot easily by right-clicking in the Model window and selecting An View Animate once the plot is created. The Select Drawing dialog allows us to select animation of either the field plot or the geometry itself, since we have a geometry variable. We'll select OK, and the Setup Animation panel is displayed. Phase is the normal swept variable in this type of plot, so we'll select OK, and the animation is automatically created and started for us. The Animation dialog allows the user to control the animation speed, to start and stop, and export the animation to a file. We'll stop the animation and change the project variable to see the effect of the septum location. Again, we return to the project window, select the, the design, change the value of offset to 0 0.2, and the plot is automatically recreated at the new variable location. This completes the Waveguide T-Junction Getting Started Guide.